Hi there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market here with this week's episode of the Market Monday Recap, where I recap the popular series, the Market Monday, that I do over at my main channel, the Rogue Deck Builder. In this week's episode of the Market Monday, I talked about the Haunt of Hightower. Haunt of Hightower is going to be the buy a box promo from Ravnica Allegiance, and I also think it's going to be a very, very popular EDH or Commander General. So... Usually when a new set comes out, you can look at Hepatra or Nahab or some of the more recent commanders. There is a spike in the cards that surround this particular card. So everyone's going to pick up this card, build around it, and it is going to cause a price spike in those cards. The Haunt of the High Tower is centered around Mill, Flying Lifelink, a 6 mana for a 3-3. When it attacks, Defender player discards a card. But what makes this kind of a unique commander is whenever a card is put into an opponent's grave from anywhere, you put a puzzle plus one plus one counter on the Haunt of Hightower. So it's going to have a lot of mill or discard themes to go with it. So I do like Geth Lord of the Vault as a baseline to look at cards that you might build around. You can also look at Noth of the Guilt Leaf for the discard aspect. It's a, a green black commander. So of course, most of the discard is going to be coming from black. Uh, Geth, there's going to be a lot of overlap with the mill. Uh, so you can see cards like Minecrank that are, are obviously going to be in this deck. And people might go a little bit of reanimation strategy with the cards like the Chainer Dementia Master. So I put together a top 10 list of cards that I think are going to go up because of the Haunt of the High Tower. So let's start off at number 10. Number 10 is Nighthower, specifically Nighthower the promo. Now, I, I personally don't think that this is the most powerful card in Haunt of the High Tower deck, but it gives you another win condition. It actually double synergizes with your commander. So if you put this on your commander, it's going to get uh, the additional bonus of whenever a creature is in your opponent's graveyard, it'll read that, as well as the plus one counters for putting cards in the graveyard. So uh, this is a good one-shot Voltron-type card. Uh, specifically, the game day promos is where I like this. The, there's been a, a couple other printings that are lower, like the Theros and the Commander 15. But this is the more unique foil. It's got an alternate art. It's got some pretty sweet art. It's the game day promo, so the supply isn't that high uh, back during this age of promos. And it's going to be in most of the decks that I think that the Haunt of the High Tower are going to run. Uh, next up, we have another card that I think will go in most of the casuals, and it seems to be pretty low at this point, and this is sort of body of mind. Now, the counters are not going to come at originally on your commander. However, if you hook this up to another card in your commander, sort of the body of mind can then attack, and you, you put, so you, on turn number six, you play your commander, you attack with the creature that's hooked up with Sword of Body Mind, and then the player puts 10 cards from your, their graveyard into their library, and then that's 10 counters on the Haunt of the High Tower. Now, again, personally, I'd never play this in a Haunt of the High Tower deck. I think it's too weak for, I've already put together a list of cards that I want to. It's going to be a personal commander that I'm going to build, and you'll see that on my main channel if you're interested. It'll either go up later today or tomorrow uh, for my list of, of cards that I'm going to build around it. But however, I think that the vast majority of people are going to be looking for mill, non-blue mill cards, so artifact cards that they can put in this deck. And sort of Body of Mind is one of the few cards that actually does achieve mill at a, a, a decent rate. So I like this card going up. I think the $12 is pretty low for this card. The last reprint it had was in the uh, Masterpiece, and it was also in a From the Vaults Relics, but other than that, it's just Scars of Mirrodin. So the supply isn't, isn't necessarily very high for this card, a Mythic out of Scars of Mirrodin. That's pre- the Return to Ravnica, which where cards, especially Mythics, can go crazy. And I think it's going to have a, a pretty decent price spike from the $12 mark up to about $18, $20 bucks, uh, when the dust settles. Next up, we talked about Geth. I think Geth is another obvious choice from Scars of Mirrodin. I don't see many decks building the Haunt of the High Tower unless they are budget decks, not including Geth Lord of the Vault, because Geth does allow you to get that big mill uh, to put the counters on your uh, commander, as well as start using anything that you, you have milled previously uh, to your advantage. So I'm thinking that people might use this this sort of card as, as the, the switch in, switch out. Some uh, EDH players love to do that. They have their main commander, but they also have a commander that's in their deck that they can switch in and out. And Geth does do this job very, very well. Uh, so I'm thinking this, this card also goes up in value. Um, not quite the sort of body in mind, as I think there will be more demand elsewhere, uh, but it's still it's still a great uh, spec target, especially if you can get in on this low. You see like Amazon at $6.99. There's be a lot of opportunity, especially this day and age, Christmas season, to get extremely low cards when everyone's mind is on Ultimate Masters still. 
On to the next one, which is the Keening Stone. Now, personally, I can't. I think this card is pretty bad. Uh, however, this doesn't stop Commander players from playing bad cards. You see it time and again, where cards I would never touch go up to five, six, seven, eight dollars. When I think that there's just better things in these slots, Keening Stone is exactly that. It's a six mana artifact, five and tap. Target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or graveyard, where X the number of cards in that player's graveyard. So you can do some really big things when you've already milled someone to then make them mill. Uh, basically, if you milled half their library, they mill it again. So the traumatized synergy of the Keening Stone, of course, is there, but not in this particular commander deck. But it will be with some other cards that we're going to showcase later on, uh, which I think will lead to people throwing this in their deck. It's also pretty budget. It's only been printed in Commander 2016, as well as Rise of Eldrazi, which had extremely low supply. So I think this is a great spec target that's going to have a double up. The next one is Minecrank. Minecrank's already starting to tick up slightly i mean it's been at this 50 cents the thing is like this is a little bit misleading because this is the price uh for mid for since it's been released in iconic masters however mine crank where there was a time you could get these for 15 cents no problem now those it's very very hard if you go on tc player right now is you're not going to find them for that 15 cent mark anymore it seems like they're up to the, about the 50 cent mark which to me shows that this this card is starting to go back up in value uh, if you actually look at the old school new phyrexia one it had this nice trajectory before it was reprinted and then did uh, subsequently crash in value. So I'm, I'm liking this to start to level off again. I mean, it, it, Iconic Masters is starting to get old enough where I, I do expect Uncommons to start gaining value. And this is a good one because it goes in plenty of commander decks and this uh, high tower is going to be starting to outstretch the, the, the low supply of the 50 cent ones up to around the dollar range. And that's where I really think this one starts to recover is where the new Phyrexia is right now. So you can you can think that the Iconic Master ones will go up to a buck 25 and then start to go up in value. And this again will be in most of the decks as whenever an opponent loses life, that player puts that many cards from the top of their library in their graveyard, synergize of course with you know, a lot of different ways to have your opponent take damage, then put that many counters on your commander. The next one is a juicy one, which is Shared Trauma. This is very, very low. In fact, you can find it for 35 cents at Card Kingdom or the TCG player market price at 25 cents. This is a joint forces, but don't worry about the joint forces. It's not important. So the scenario is that you cast your commander for six. The next turn, you have seven mana available, hopefully. You just pump seven mana into, into it, and each player puts the top six cards of their library into their graveyard. If you're in a four-player game, that is giving 18 counters to your commander. That means your commander is 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 going to effectively one shot whoever it's attacking so i mean maybe you won't have the mana you have to hook it up to like a lightning grease or something like that uh well lightning grease is free but uh, anything else to, to protect it, to give evasion i get it but even even pumping in like four mana five mana into the shared trauma is going to give a big boost to your commander again we are looking to really synergize with the commander this is one of the better ones um it's going to take a little bit of education so what i'm what i'm saying by that is people don't realize this card exists and it's just going to take something like the command zone showcasing this commander. And then people are going to be like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a card that's going to be put in. I love this card with its supply because it's basically non-existent, which is the Commander Anthology Volume 2, as well as just the regular commander. Both of those are extremely low supply. And these are the type of cards that really, really can go up in value just with one commander. Look at Hypatra. Hypatra with any of those negative one negative encounters that is shot through the roof. And Shared Trauma is another card that I think is is in that ballpark of low supply and will have high demand from the buy box promo. Alrighty, on to the next one, which is a conspiracy to take the crown, uh, capital punishment, uh, starting with you, each player votes for death and taxes. Each opponent sacrifices a creature for each death vote and discards a card for each taxes vote. So either way, you're going to get cards in the graveyard. I think this is pretty good because it doesn't affect you with opponents. Um, there's a lot of, you know, one-sided, uh, uh, a lot of times when you're looking for like like these these pox type effects, they also affect you. This is one that doesn't. So you're gonna have your opponents sacking creatures and discarding cards while your board uh, st stays unchanged. Again, worst case scenario is four things just go to the graveyard and your 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 uh, commander gets four counters. I just like it because the price point is incredibly low. Card Kingdom at twenty five cents. A conspiracy, of course, is something that's gonna start going up. I actually play this in many other commander decks, and I think the more commanders that actually synergize with this, the better. I mean, you have old school other discard decks that are uh, go very well with Capital Punishment. I'm very surprised to see uh, this low of a price point on Capital Punishment. Now we're really getting to the juicy ones that have a lot of synergies with the, the commander. The next one is Blood Chief Ascension. Now, Blood Chief Ascension is already extremely expensive comparatively to where it was 
two, three, four, five months ago. You can see that Blood Chief Ascension is, is your typical M19 uh, gone down since M19. Uh, that's what I've been trying to really beat home with this channel and other things is something happened right after Dominaria to really... Uh, a lot of the staple cards, the Cyclonic Rifts, the Blood Chief Ascensions, the a lot of modern cards, had this period of stagnation and even started to go down. While well, I'm thinking a lot of these cards are going to begin to recover, we might see Ultimate Masters have the same sort of effect. I'm thinking that it was just a lot of people putting money into Battlebond and Dominaria and out of sight for everything else, and that's what causes stagnation in the singles market. And we might still see this because of Ultimate Masters. However, Blood Chief Ascension is going to start going up regardless of this new commander. However, it has massive synergy with the uh, high tower and it with being of each end step if an opponent lost two life you put a quest counter if there's two quest counters whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard anywhere if it has three or more counters on it you may have that player lose two life if you do gain two life so if you're having cards that mill your opponent and they have the blood chief ascension online they're going to be uh, taking a lot of damage and of course if you're beginning to be running mind crank uh, this is a two card combo, Mind Crank and Blood Chief Ascension, one of the oldest uh, tricks in the book for Commander. And I think that this is another Commander that's majority people that have built this are going to throw these two card combo into it and call it a day. And both of them are going to simultaneously go up. What I like about Blood Chief Ascension is, of course, it's got a ton of demand elsewhere. You're going to see, I'm sure, a Dorzov Commander that's going to want Blood Chief Ascension. Uh, you're going to see a Rakdos Commander that's going to absolutely want Blood Chief Ascension. Uh, this is by far probably the best spec with what we know coming out of Guilds of Ravnica. Again, this video is more focused on the High Tower. Have a Rakdos. Whew, this any sort of Rakdos commander again that wants to have damage be dealt to be doing stuff with the new uh, spectacle ability. This is a great enabler for that. All right, the next one, which is another juicy one that's been going up in value, is the Dread Summons. This has had just the Commander Anthology and the Commander 2015 as the printing, and this is another heavy mill card. So it's X, black, black. Each player puts the top X cards of his or her library in your graveyard, and each creature card is put in the graveyard. You put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token on the battlefield tapped. So another mill card to pump up your Commander. Uh, pretty low price point to get in at 3 uh, it does seem like Amazon's already up. I don't know what's up with that. And the market price is actually very similar to the mid price and as well as the card kingdom. So I'm really expecting this card to start going up uh, because of the high tower. Last but definitely not least, I usually, this is my cup of tea. I like to look for these, these old school, low value rares. This is Whetstone. Whetstone has really hasn't had a commander that it's synergized with. That's why you have this kind of bulk rare price for Whetstone. And this is Adiverse of Saga, long time ago. Uh, what does that say? 1999? 90, I can't read it. Whenever, whenever uh, Urza Saga came out. Three mana, each player puts the top two cards of his library into, in, into his or graveyard. That might not sound that much, but one activation is, is again, a four-player game, is going to give six counters to your commander. If you have something like the Cobble Coffers, Urborg, Trimiagmoth combo, uh, you can pump a ton of mana into it, this, and you can easily uh, lethal one person with your commander. And at, at this point, too, it's, it's not like a bad... I'm sure there will be other combos to create infinite mana or close to infinite mana. Um, a Torment of Hailfire is going to go in this deck, obviously, so people are going to be playing those those things that make big, big mana, the Crypt Gas, the, uh, the, the one that came out of Battle Bond, uh, as well as the Magus, all that can generate a ton of mana. And this is a great payoff for generating a ton of mana and then building your commander to a huge uh, level. So I like Whetstone. This is, again, going to be another educational card, but all in all, I think this card is going to have a huge price increase. You should get your copies as soon as possible for the Whetstone as, again, it's few and far between the amount of mill cards that are available for just black. You have Artifact and you have uh, Black. And there's not that many cards. It's going to limit the, the, the choice of people that are going to build this, this deck. I'm expecting this is going to be a popular commander deck. And this is going to be a, a good shoe-in. So to recap, we have the Night Howler, the Sword of Body Mine, the Geth, Lord of the Vault, the Keening Stone, the Mind Crank, Shared Trauma, Capital Punishment, Blood Chief Ascension, Dread Summons, and the Whetstone. So that's kind of my market money recap for this week. You can go check out the entire video over at the Rogue Deck Builder channel. I'll have a link in the description. And this is typically what we do. I'm more of a rambly on the Rogue Market or the on the Market Monday, and then I bring it into a top ten TLDR farm. Uh, TLDR form over here at the Rogue Market channel. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Kevin with the Rogue Market. Thanks for watching.